Thank you for tuning in to the Mortgage Innovators Podcast. Before we get into today's episode, we want to remind you that the Mortgage Innovators Conference 2023 Innovators Unite will be held June 14th and 15th at the Hilton Anaheim. Sponsorship opportunities are now open. And if you want more information, head to mortgageinnovators.com forward slash conference to keep up to date. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Mortgage Innovators Podcast. My name is Margaret Chiavini, and we are excited that you're here today. I'm honored to be joined by the lovely Sue Woodard and Jason Smith with Cloud Virga. Wow, I guess you're not uh, lovely, Jason. Sorry, but... uh, (laughs) That's okay. I'm slightly green, and I have giant hands, so I'm good. You carry on, Sue. You are lovely. Oh, well, we have a we have a really fun episode, uh, the power within utilizing current tech to its max. Before we get started with that, um, Jason, just really want to thank you and Cloud Verga for your 2023 Mortgage Innovators Conference sponsorship. Really appreciate that. Absolutely. And uh, would you just let our um, audience and listeners know just just briefly about uh, Cloud Verga? Yeah, absolutely. No, love to. Uh, First of all, uh, appreciate it and love the conference. Had a blast last year. Love to be a part of it. You guys put on a top-notch conference and everything about it. So uh, fantastic. Yeah, Cloud Virga, we are a digital lending platform is the easiest way to put it. Uh, We work primarily in the point of sale space right now on the retail consumer direct side. We've been doing that since about 2017 and we've recently rolled into the wholesale TPO space. And then, uh, you know, a lot of stuff coming this year, like uh, entry into the home equity space, a mobile app and and several other great things. So we are growing. We love the partnership and uh, happy to be here with the lovely Sue Woodard as well. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I come more often. This is uh, like, I'll tell you what, you guys are making me feel so good, but this is going to be a really great conversation though. I mean, we were talking a little in our green room before we got, got kicked off on the call and are we ready to dig right into it, Margaret? Absolutely. Because, you know, it's very interesting, this topic about of utilizing technology. And Margaret, this is a conversation that you and I have had probably many times over, over lots of time. Um, but certainly now is a time that lots of lenders are taking a look at their tech stack and saying, hey, what are we using? What are we not using? What's not working for us and, and why? And so, you know, Jason, you're obviously hearing some of the same conversations that lenders are having as well. So, like, what are what are you hearing from people, and where do you advise that they get started? Yeah, no, appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. You know, a lot of folks when they when they first look at technology and they get it, they're all gung ho, and uh, they know why they want it. They're they they see the gaps it fills and things like that. And and it seems as time passes that and and people get distracted, that a lot of that gets forgotten, and people really don't utilize their technology to its its full potential and quite frankly up to the reason why they they acquired it in the first place um, so there's there's a couple of easy things that that you can do really and the first one it it seems so obvious but it is look at the their website whatever vendor you're using whatever technology partner you're using look at their website because they're typically going to highlight the great features of it and they could be some things that that you're not using there could also they could also be highlighting some use cases and things like that from uh, other partners in the industry, which is which is really great. And it's and it's it, it's kind of funny it, when I was I was thinking about this, it hit me, and it was something that just happened the other day. I had a, a brand new fancy washing machine for well just over a, a year now. Moved into the house about a year ago, and I've been just dumping the stuff in it. And all of a sudden, I just happened to slow down. I looked up, and in front of me, there's this thing. It's a detergent. You pull it out, and you're like, you can pour it out there. I was like, what the what? I'm like, all right. So of course I I did that, and it's not necessarily that I was that I was doing it wrong before, but I wasn't using it the way it was designed, meaning to where it then integrates, if I can use a technology term, the the detergent in at the right time. So it's I'm not even something as simple as a washing machine. I wasn't I wasn't really maximizing. So that was a um, that was a, a an eye opener for me. Uh, you know, another thing that is, is, and that kind of leads into the second thing, which is really kind of taking a step back and, and looking and asking, am I using this tech to its full potential? Sometimes like a washing machine or frankly, any other thing that we use in our personal lives, we'll, we'll typically kind of stop 
at the first thing that brings us a little bit of a lift or a little bit of excitement. We go, okay, I'm using this. Again, we get distracted with live things that, that are going on, but you know, are we overlooking things like automation, task management, additional mm-hmm. tools that can really kind of that, that land and expand a little bit? Uh, you know, are we using, are we leveraging canned assets that they've created and templates? You know, sometimes you don't have to, you don't have to be the the creative tool behind it. I I, I liked it. I think it was uh, 3M. I, I'm dating back anyway, but they used to have a commercial or somebody that that talked about we don't create all these things. We just make them better. And sometimes that's all it takes. You don't have to. Obviously, you're not the one that created the technology, but you knew that it could help make you better. And you really just have to utilize that. And sometimes that's as simple as asking your team. You know, maybe your team is looking for different things that they can that they can use different problems they want to solve. And with the industry that we're in, I mean, frankly, most of us aren't working at the same company we were three, four, five years ago, 10, whatever the case may be. And there could be a lot of knowledge assets sitting there just waiting to be tapped. People that have actually used it in their, what do we say, in our in our previous life, uh, when we politely talk about a, a previous company we worked at, but um, it, it's really good. And then I'd say, you know, probably the last thing is, is just kind of learn from your history, you know, so you can, you can repeat it. And I, I had to write it down. I had to look down because it's one of my favorite quotes from Lion's story is, it was that my, like my friend Timon says, sometimes you got to put your past behind you. And it, and in this case, we want to, we want to really leverage that. We don't want to put our past behind you. And as a, uh, as a former and still partial salesperson, there's a lot of things that we go over in in the sales pitch and that we highlight that are, are really benefits of the platform. And if you're working with a good company and you're working with a good salesperson, they will have highlighted what actually can help you based upon your call it list of grievances or your pain points that that you need. So sometimes it's as simple as searching back through that that email or going to the to, to the folder um, and, and looking that up and you know, start, start using those, look into those a little more. And um, the last thing is really, it's, and that parlays into that, and I'll, I'll take a breath, is uh, don't be afraid to ask. And it's as simple as that. And again, sometimes the simplest answers are the easiest ones. Don't pray, be afraid to ask. Reach out to your, uh, reach out to your vendor partners, ask them. Uh, as, a, as a person that, that, that heads up everything client related for Cloud Verga, we want a doc. We want people using our technology. We want people using our technology the, to the full extent it can. So if you don't think you are, reach out to your technology partner and just ask. I bet you a dollar or a million that they will be willing to jump right in and show you exactly how they can help you. And if they're not, give me a call and, and I'll show you how you can use it. Only sales pitch here, sorry. <laughs> Well, uh-huh. one of the the comments I would make on on what you just shared um, is that I also think that technology providers have done a lot over the last couple mm-hmm. of years and been solving you know solving problems. And I think in a lot of times in the lending community, as we know, you know, the last several years during the refi run, you know, you didn't have that problem. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. you know, there were you had different issues about like how are we going to manage all this business? You weren't, for example, looking at business that would help with additional pull through, or how do you get leads into the funnel in the first place, or how do you, you know, the the issues are different. But I would also encourage, as you said, people need to talk to their technology vendors and find out what you've been up to for the last couple of years, or is there something that it wasn't my problem when I reached out to you two years ago? I was trying to solve this problem. Hey, you might solve this problem too, and I just don't know it. So I think you brought up some some brilliant points. I mean, Margaret, what would what would you say from your experience? Yeah. Well, you know what what I always think about is um, a lot of these episodes we talk about the power of collaboration, and we talk about how important it is for your technology providers. They're a partner, and that's to me what you really highlighted is, as you say, Sue, the issues we're facing today are very different than they were a year ago or 18 months ago. And um, so I love that. I love, you know, ask your rep. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, you know, one sometimes, of the things that... Sometimes um, it's that simple. <laughs> one, one of the things I used to tell, um, you know, that I would talk to technology companies about is, I would say, 
act as if, which is from a great, great movie, by the way, Boiler Room. But, um, but I'd say act as if your contract is sitting on your customer's table right now. I know it's not up for renewal, but if that contract were sitting on their table right now and your champion inside that company had to talk the whole rest of the executive team at that customer company, are they are they equipped? Do they know like all of the value that you bring, all of the things that you have? All I mean, do you, you better act as if somebody is sitting around a table staring at that contract with an executive team right now and make sure you feel really confident that they know exactly all of the value that, that you bring. And if they don't, then it's it's your job as that technology vendor to to help equip them with that. Because don't don't assume they know just because they're using it and you're there and it's plugged in. Right. Don't make those assumptions. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. I, I was just going to say to to your point, Margaret. I think one of the, the the cool aspects of, and I say cool, of, of people finally digging into a lot of a lot of firms digging into their technology and seeing how um, it can it can create additional lifts. I think it, it's kind of a the tail end of a trifecta effect that that started with the the pandemic that forced a lot of people to embrace technology more than they ever did in our industry because suddenly you had teams that went virtually that had worked together in offices for you know years and decades. And then you had a time when everyone was crazy busy. So we're looking for things that create those efficiencies and get those those instant solutions. Well, now it, it's kind of those those have all kind of come full circle. And it's like, okay, we, we have some of these. Now we have the time to look into it, but we also, we have the necessity to force ourselves to see what additional value we can get out of these and maybe what additional technologies we need to go with it but certainly how we can even how we can properly and even more leverage the technology that we have and what that's going to do with us as a as an industry i think it's going to really help us get past that last big hurdle of embracing technology fully we've done a really great job as an industry for several years now but i think it, it's really going to help us get to that point and and almost that point of no return, where where no one is trying to get back to the way it was, which is where we need to be. It's, it's a joke mm -hmm. I say about the the two monitor things. You know, when it comes to to adoption of things, I when I when I was first given two monitors at a at a large bank that rhymes with our country, I'm not going to mention any names. They <laughs> they put two monitors in front of me. I'm like, what the hell do I need two monitors for? I've had two my entire. I have one. And after a week, I, I was like, holy crap, how did I ever survive? And now I will threaten violence with anyone that tries to steal my second monitor. So sometimes you just have to, you have to be okay with exploring that sort of that uncomfortable space of not knowing and just and, and reach out, you know, embrace the people that are around you because all they want to do is, is help you, whether it's your team or it's your vendor partners. They, they just wanna help you because everyone wants to do better. Totally. And, and I think sort of this notion that if we can be comfortable with, we don't know what we don't know, and we have this magnificent team in our technology partners that we can leverage as you articulated. Let's turn this over to the other side. So we talked about as mortgage bankers, what can we do to um, really get the power within our technology. What can our, our vendors do? What can vendors do fundamentally to educate their lender customers to, in essence, get the full power out of their technology? Yeah, that's a great question. And I have some answers. Um, <laughs> let's jump right in. No, it's a uh, it's it's a couple of simple things, and there's the, the first thing I would say, and it and it's something that a lot of companies don't really think about. I don't know if it's they they just don't think they'll have the audience, they don't have the person that can talk for them, uh, whatever the case may be. But it, it's something I I had begun at a, a previous company in a previous life to quote my own self quote in the industry from earlier is that, and one of the first thing is monthly product spotlights. You know, get your your existing client staff together, your existing clients together, send it out and spotlight a product. If you have multiple pro products in your portfolio, pick a product each month. It can be as quickly as 15, 20 minutes. It can be as much as, as 60 minutes. Set it up the way we like to set up demos, which it's very interactive. It's very street level. It's very relaxed and show, you know, hey, let's go over this. 
let's talk about maybe some features that that you might have overlooked. Let's talk about things that we see a lot of our other clients using some some best practices. It's a really great way to educate your clients. And quite honestly, from a company perspective, it's a really great way to cross sell and to introduce them to other opportunities within your organization that they might not have thought about or just other features on your existing technology that that they might not have thought, which is only going to deepen and enhance that relationship. Uh, the next thing is is, is something I, I've done quite a lot in my career, and that's having a, a quarterly business review. And everyone hears you, oh, Jason, not another meeting, or you hear QBR, you're like, oh, those are painful. But I think people think that because they, they approach them the wrong way. Uh, they approach it as it's just another reporting call. It's like, I'm going to have to go over this quarter of this, we're going to forecast that, and it's you have to touch on that a little bit. That's just that's just typical. What you want to do with these though, it, with these, these though, is to try to try to introduce into the conversation from your client side some more senior level folks that really have influence. Maybe they were some of your decision makers. Maybe they were your your sponsor, the person that signed off on it. Get them in the conversation and make them much more strategic in nature, where you're talking about where do they see where do they see their company going. What are goals are they trying to accomplish? And then layering in how your technology can help with that. And that's going to open the door to a lot of a lot of things they might not know about it. And that's also going to give you an opportunity to give some suggestions of what their competitors are doing. A lot of folks overlook the fact that your clients want to know what everyone else is doing. They want to know what their competition is doing. And not necessarily so they can go, hey, I'm going to go apples to apples with this or I'm going to start checking these boxes but it's so they can embrace some things that are working. As competitive as an industry we are, we are also a very family brotherly industry that really wants to help everyone succeed. And, and a lot of people overlook that fact. They think it's just very, from a vendor side or from a, a, a technology standpoint that, that it, it's too competitive for that. Uh, and, it, and it's not. And the last thing that goes in, it kind of pulls everything full circle, which is communication, communication, communication. You have to, you know, it could be as simple as leveraging some automated resources that the technology or your tech stack has already. Um, that's going to help you to enhance the relationship with the with your clients. Um, I, I, again, in, in a previous slide, we had an automated uh, email marketing platform. Oh, there we go. That um, that we never we never really leveraged the way we should have to keep in contact with our own clients. What greater, easier way to, to let them know things? Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing is to encourage and create user forums. No one is going to tell you more about your product than your actual users. They're going to tell you the good, the bad, and the missing. And sometimes that missing, it's not actually missing. They just don't know it exists. So it's a really good opportunity to not only embrace and leverage and deepen the relationship, which is something you, you want to do, but also to add value to that relationship and, and help them out. And it's, again, these are a lot of things that, that folks are doing, but maybe not leveraging, like their clients not leveraging their technology to the full extent, but they're not leveraging the opportunities that they have available to educate. Well, and now is certainly a time when people need to be leveraging all the tools that they have at their disposal, mm -hmm. getting the most that they can out of all their technologies. Um, and I, I loved this discussion. And you know what? I I was thinking while we were talking, I actually, weirdly, pretty recently found out my washing machine that I've had for three years. I just found out it has one of the big drawers you pull out where you can fill it up with a bunch of detergent and it'll just go for like, you know, <laughs> two months. I never saw it was like I never saw it before. So don't be embarrassed about not knowing about your little slide out drawer because I didn't know about my I knew about my little one and I was kind of laughing at you for a minute, sort of. But then I was like, oh, you know what? I didn't know about the big slide out drawer. So, you know, but it's a great analogy, I think, for what power, you know, it's the power within, right, Margaret? Like the things right. that we have right at our fingertips. So how Absolutely. can we utilize them? And, and great feedback. Obvious, but it's not. So, um, well, Jason, thank you very much. We, unfortunately, were at the end of our episode. I love how you brought it together for us on both sides. 
both what the user of the technology can do to really get everything that there is in that technology and then what the technology provider can do. Thank you so much. We always try to uh, bring all sides when we have these episodes. So thanks so much. Um, look forward to visiting with you again. And of course, at uh, the Mortgage Innovators Conference 2023. And uh, Sue, thank you so much. Always a pleasure Absolutely. to be here with you. Take yeah, care. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and this is my little fella that fell off my camera in the way. So he makes a big... <laughs> <laughs> a big splash, but uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Always great conversation with everyone. Okay. So enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care.